congregation of the Holy Ghost Fathers, a celebration of faith and service. In the spirit of unwavering dedication to the divine and wholehearted commitment to serving both God and humanity, we bear witness to the profound spiritual strength that arises from this sacred calling. Through our steadfast pursuit of God's work in His chosen way, we never find ourselves lacking in His boundless supply of grace. But who are the Spiritans and what is the founding history and guiding charism of the Congregation of Holy Ghost Fathers? Our congregation is officially called the Congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We were founded in 1703 by Father Claude Poulard de Place in France. And in 1848, our congregation majored with the Society of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which was founded by Father Francis Mary Paul Lieberman also in France. We serve in over 60 countries across the world. And here in Kenya, we have a common house of theology where students from all over the world come to study theology at Tangaza College University. Our charism of the founders is to serve people who are in their need, especially in places where the church finds it hard to get workers. The Spiritan uh, Formation Journey takes 10. TV. Tumetoa kambali, bado tuko bali, na tunayenda wapi? Bali. Endelea kutazama. Kapuchin TV. Huduma katoliki ya uinjilishaji. A very good morning, dear viewer. Welcome to Captain TV, your Catholic identity. This is Missions of Hope with our sister Esther Muturi, Tumsifi Yesu Christu. Today, we have a quote that says that hope is praying for rain, but faith is bringing an umbrella. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. And this program is all about offering hope and in perspective, we look at the different men and women in the Catholic Church who offer hope in different ways. Today, we are blessed to have great men who are going to tell us who they are, what they do, and how they are serving the world and offering hope to the society. Welcome. Welcome, my brothers. Thank you, So sir. I request that you begin with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the, the hearts of your faithful, and bring them in the fire of your love. Your love. Send forth the Spirit, and those have been created, and you shall live in the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of your faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit may be to your eyes and never rejoice in consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we want to thank you for this wonderful morning. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We pray that your Holy Spirit may continue strengthening, encouraging all agents of hope out there, so that at the end of that day, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name may be praised. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, brother, for that uh, powerful prayer as we begin our program. And welcome to our studio, Captain TV. I hope, is it your first time or second time or the beginning? <laughs> uh, not so. Not it's the so. second time. It's the second time. So mm. welcome. And today you are coming in the capacity of representing your congregation. Maybe introduce yourself, tell us who you are, tell the viewer who you are, and which is this congregation in the studio today. Okay. Yeah. My name is Vincent Kamara. I am one of the Spiritans. I come from Uganda, and currently I'm here doing my studies. Our congregation is the Congregation of the Holy Spirit, under the protection of Immaculate Heart of Mary. Thank you. Welcome, Brother Kamara. Yeah, thank Welcome. you, Sister. 
Uh, I'm Peter Mwanki. I come from Nyahururu, the Catholic Diocese of Nyahururu, a parish called St. Teresa of Child Jesus uh, Parish. I'm also here under the same capacity of my brother, studying theology at Angaza, and we are here to represent our congregation as it was distributed by my brother. Thank you. You know your congregation has a very long name, but you allow us, dear viewer, to use the word the Spiritan. Growing up, your congregation, they used to call it the Holy Ghost Fathers. Yes. <laughs> and people would yes. wonder which is this ghost that is holy. <laughs> Maybe you could elaborate a bit about that. <laughs> yeah, before Vatican Council too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the writings in the sacred scripture and everything that pertained where you find there is Holy Spirit, yeah. it was commonly referred as ghost. to as Holy Ghost. Yeah. So after Vatican Council too, mm -hmm. that's when now the vocabulary Holy Spirit was, uh, Holy Ghost was changed to Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And here we are as Holy Ghost Fathers yeah. or Spiritans. <laughs> if you prefer to go by Pre-Vatican Council too, yeah. you are right to call us Holy Ghost. Yeah. If you wish, call yeah. us Spiritans or Holy Ghost Fathers. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, that, uh, uh, elaborating on that. And uh, Welcome and tell us who are the Spiritan or the Holy Ghost Fathers or the Congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Brother Kamara. The congregation was founded in France in 1703 by a crowd of the, the press. This was a, were born in a noble family. By then we know if, let's say, your father is a lawyer, that is before French Revolution of 1789, if your father is a lawyer, you have to take the same route and become a lawyer. As we know, the society was divided into three categories, mm -hmm. uh, those who have and those who don't have, and the medium class. So this Pula de Plus crowd, he founded it on 27th of May, uh, 1703, and uh, it began with a humble beginning in the sense that this is the first founder to begin a congregation when he's not a priest. He was a lay man at the age of 23. Wow. Yes. That's and <laughs> uh, at that very age, mm -hmm. he had pursued the ordinary studies, uh, taking his father's career as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Then, with the time after practicing law and seeing that uh, really this was not his vocation, he had to opt to, become, to study and become a priest. And as I said, on 1703, that's when he went to the Jesuit seminary, uh, studying there uh, as a boarder. But then later with the time, he realized, no. He has his fellow brothers who were also pursuing the same goal, but they were coming from a humble family. So he looked into it and said, no, I, will, I would, would rather go out and rent. So that I used, uh, because his father, as I said, he was really well, well to from a well-to-do family, I used my father's modest pocket money to also support my brothers. Okay. And um, he had to rent outside, helping those seminars who can't go uh, by themselves paying school fees. Because by then, before he entered the seminary, it was not like this day when we say, where seminarians are sleeping in the uh, wards and the seminaries. Mm -hmm. By then you could do your studies coming from home and going home and going we are over. We are the scholars. <laughs> okay. So it was none of the formators' business where you sleep, okay. or as long as you attend classes and you are available. Oh. So when he saw how his brothers were struggling, mm -hmm. and at the same time having that compassionate spirit, seeing how the, uh, these, we call them street kids, yeah, we call them um, chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Then he had also to have that spirit and said, no, these boys have to be helped. France being in the winter, you know how cold that place can be. So every house uh, ab absolutely has a chimney where a chimney where people have to light fire inside to warm themselves. And these kids, they have nothing to do apart from penetrating through those uh, chimneys to clean and earn a living. Mm -hmm. So with that very kind of passion, passion uh, seeing how they are suffering, his fellow brothers, that's when he opted to do so and help them. Mm -hmm. These boys, of course, had not enough money, but he was getting food from the Jesuit seminary, the leftovers to help them, and at the same time sustain his brothers. Mm -hmm. Out of that categories of two people, that's when he picked 12 of them, 
whom he is realized they had a very good ambition of becoming priests the by their background, the Chokora and those oh. very seminarians. And then he said, no, mm -hmm. I better pick this squirrel so that we can join together and pursue my goal. Mm -hmm. So on that very date I mentioned earlier, the 27th of May, it was Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. We may not say that uh, precisely this was the uh, beginning of the congregation, mm -hmm. but at least we can't avoid saying that that was the conception of the congregation mm -hmm. that later emerged as Holy Ghost Fathers. Okay. Yeah. Currently, we are working in over 60 countries in Africa, Europe, Asia. Mm -hmm. And as I talk now, uh, I can say we are about, because probably up to now, we might find there is someone who is professing that act of Kondoya profession, yeah. or who is on the altar signing. Yeah. So we can estimate and say we are about 30,000 members. Wow. Our congregation is comprised of brothers, uh, priests, and lay people who are commonly known as lay associates. Lay associates. Uh, all the spiritans. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brother Kamara, um, for giving us the background of the spiritan or the yes. Holy Ghost Fathers. And uh, that is the humble beginning, as I said. Yes. Then yeah. on um, in 1842, mm -hmm. Another Jewish convert called uh, Francis Meripol Lieberman mm -hmm. founded the congregation known as the Congregation of the Holy Heart of Mary. Mm -hmm. And when he went uh, for to check on the propaganda feed, uh, this is a, a doctrine, a, a, a dicastery that is responsible for uh, registr registering congregations. Yeah. Having seen his ambitions, having seen his goals and the objectives, they realized because they had started it. Papa said to help the black slaves mm -hmm. who were living in the French colonies. Okay. By then, of course, if we talk about black slaves, you know that's the time when the transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. was at its best. Yeah. So people who are fed from here to Europe, those that is the job they were doing. And he had that concern. How can we help them? So when he also abandoned the Jewish background, a person whose father had prepared to become a very good rabbi in the future, mm -hmm. he had to abandon it. And actually, we are told his father socially excommunicated him and cast him. Because a rabbi now turning into Christianity, Christianity. it has never been heard of. Yeah. And moreover, a person we are expecting to become a, a, a rabbi. Mm -hmm. So when he went to register the congregation, Having gone through his objectives and goals, they realized they are no more different, not different from those ones of Cloud Pula de, Fla de Plus. Mm -hmm. And of course, the creation of Cloud Pula de Plus had underwent so many, undergone so many challenges during the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. So they told him, it is better you merge it and form one congregation. Okay. So from then on, in the year of 1848, mm -hmm. that's when the merging happened. And uh, in ordinary language or in business, when a merge happens, one of the congregation ceases to be. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is when the congregation of the Holy Heart of Mary founded by Lieberman mm -hmm. was absorbed into the congregation of the uh, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And from there, now we have one congregation as the congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Okay. That phrase, Im protection of the Heart of he Mary, does not Im uh, surface in the title mm -hmm. because of the Congregation of Lieberman, not at all. Okay. When the crowd pulled the plus phone they did, he consecrated his young boys, his twelve boys, all to the Immaculate Heart of Mary okay. on that very day of Pentecost. Okay. So from there, that's when you have this big family called the Congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Thank you. Thank you for elaborating more because I was almost asking you about Lieberman, but thank you that you have now uh, brought him into the picture. And uh, mm -hmm. Brother Peter, yeah. this congregation has a charism yeah. that drives anyone who belongs to this congregation. Yeah. What is the, the, I mean, the charism? And the wi who, who, whose charism do you follow? Of the first mm -hmm. founder or the second founder? Mm -hmm. how, how does it go up, uh, as far as the spiritans are concerned? Okay, thank you, sister. Yeah. You know, speaking of charism, uh, we should not forget the vision, the vision of, the yeah, of the founder. founder yeah. And as my brother has elaborated, um, the founder had a great interest 
to the poor seminarians, mm -hmm. and also those people who are poor in the society, uh, who had no the capacity to go through uh, studies. Yeah. Because by then, as you said, the, you had to take care of your studies sure. if you want to become a priest and all of you. So the charism is enshrined in that vision of cold, polar, depressed. Okay. That is for us, we are sent to evangelize the poor. Mm -hmm. That's our charism, to evangelize uh, the poor. Okay. And uh, oh, we cannot speak of the charism in isolation of the spirituality. Mm -hmm. And all these are enshrined and uh, we get that strength from the Gospel of Luke, okay. chapter 4, verse 18, mm -hmm. that uh, we, are al we are called upon to go out and bring the good news to, to the poor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope the viewer is following and is coming to know who are these, the Holy Ghost Fathers that you used to know, but today is the, Hol the Holy Spirit or the Spiritans, and they are in the house telling us more of who they are. Before you decided, there were so many other congregations, but you chose to join the Holy Ghost. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so um, maybe, Brother Peter, why join at the Holy Spirit, I'm sure there are so many other congregations that are, that are in Nyahururu. Mm. What attracted you to join these great men of God? Okay. Um, to start with, I never knew them. Okay. I never knew the Spiritans, mm -hmm. the Congregation of the Holy Spirit and the Protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Mm -hmm. It was uh, brought to my attention by a religious sister. Okay. Belonging to the Little Daughters of St. Joseph. She is the one who gave me the, con the contacts to join the congregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the moment that uh, I was given a chance to go for the come and see. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the come and see, that's when all these things are stipulated and they are brought to your attention. You are able to know who they are, what they do, and all this. Mm -hmm. So that uh, sediment of, the, uh, car of our charism, mm -hmm of our charism, it was uh, defined to me, the evangelized the poor, and these poor are those people who are at the periphery, mm. those people who are at the periphery. Mm. And uh, the method which uh, we use in evangelization attracted me more, yeah. because as uh, we are going to evangelize, before we bring the word of God, mm -hmm. before we bring the word of God, we start by educating okay. those whom that, mm. those whom that uh, we intend to evangelize. After educating, we have uh, some community services. So this educating and community services attracted me the much. Okay. And uh, so this could be uh, where God wishes me to be. And okay. that's how uh, I started joining with them. Okay. So that, uh, that uh, idea of serving those people who are at the periphery, mm -hmm. where the church finds it difficult, mm -hmm. uh, why is it difficult to trace workers to work there? Mm -hmm. uh, attracted me, and I saw, indeed, I think I can serve God better in this capacity. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brother Peter, Brother Kamara. We are continuing this conversation. We are going for a short break, and when we come back, we shall continue to understand what is some of the missions that they are involved in, in bringing hope to the society. I hope you are there. Keep watching. If Do you have any question? Do you have any comment? Do you have any recommendation? Please do not forget to talk to us because we are here for you. This is Missions of Hope with our sister Esther Muturi. Keep watching. Christianity, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and prophets. Islam, 
No one of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. Judaism What is hateful to you do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. Baha'i Faith Lay not on any soul a load that you would not wish to be laid upon you and desire not for anyone the things you would not desire for yourself. Buddhism Treat not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Hinduism This is the sum of duty. Do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you. Puchin TV. And the Lea Kutazama. Capuchin TV. Kitambulisho Katoliki. Welcome back, dear viewer. We are still going on with our conversation. And before we left, uh, Brother Peter was telling us where he has come from, why he decided to join the Spiritan. And uh, Brother Peter, maybe I would ask you, what was the experience, you know, most of the time when people are deciding to join religious life. It's not a walk in the park, especially maybe from the parents or from the relatives. How was your experience? Oh, thank you, sister, for that question. Yeah. You know, the experience was not as smooth yeah. as someone could think. Yeah. Uh, I, I come from a family where my mom is not a Catholic, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. she, she, yes, she never explicitly showed that she she's not for the idea. Yeah. But you could see in one way or another mm -hmm. she was not for the idea, but she has been very supportive okay. for my joining phase. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said before, the Spiritans, Holy Ghost Fathers are not common in Yaru Diocese. Yeah. So I never knew them. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Yaru Diocese, we only have the Consulator Fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, after I came across this uh, the spiritans mm -hmm. going for the come and see. I had also applied to the diocese yeah. because that was the only, uh, th those were the only people that were around, uh, around me. Mm -hmm. And uh, upon applying to the diocese, mm -hmm. it happened that the moment I was called uh, to go to Thika, that's where our postulants is mm -hmm. and where our vocational director is based, on my way to go to Thika to collect the letter of admission yeah. to the spiritan, I was also called by the vocations director of the diocese. <laughs> so okay. I asked what a co coincidence. Yeah. And so I had to, to decide. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment now when it becomes very difficult. Yeah. I'm called to the diocese and uh, the other side I'm called to the spirit. Yeah. Now I had to make the decision and I decided spirit could be the God chosen congregation for me to join. Yeah. Because I have been waiting for the diocese for quite some time mm -hmm. and now uh, it's like God is uh, putting me, uh, putting me at uh, at, at a crossroad, you, you know, right to make the right decision where yeah. to go, whether yeah. to go to the diocese yeah. or the spirit. Okay. And uh, that's how now I decided to come to the spirit. How is your mother yeah. now? Uh, my mom is appreciating it. Okay. She's very supportive, as okay. I said. Okay. And. Uh, in fact, she looks forward for me to meet the goals of my life. Thank you, Mama. Keep praying for your son. Thank you so much, Brother Peter. Brother Kamara, I know maybe there is something maybe you didn't touch or as far as the 
the background, the motto, or whatever is concerned about the spirit. And maybe you could tell us a bit of that and tell us all the way from Uganda. <laughs> you are here in Kenya and you chose to be a priest. Why not a doctor or, a, or, a, or something else, engineer? You d just decided to join the religious life. Uh, I will begin with the first point about our motto. Yeah. Our motto is Ko urnum et anima una. It is a paraphrase of the verse in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 32, mm -hmm. where it is described the community lived with the one heart and one soul. They never lacked, they were sharing anything in common, mm -hmm. everything in common. And that's when you see, as I mentioned from the beginning, our congregation, much as our focal founder was poor, yeah. but he said the little that I'm getting from the pocket money my father is giving me, let me share it with these uh, brothers and of mine. Yeah. That's where we get our motto, and indeed, we are, we are trying to live it, and we are living it our best. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> uh, concerning yeah. the journey of the from Uganda, why yeah. not a doctor or something else? Why you uh, necessarily want to become a, a priest or a spirit? Mm -hmm. uh, my journey can be traced back uh, in 2003. Okay. Yeah, that's when I started serving as an altar boy. I stepped on the altar actually out of like kind of competition mm -hmm. because I that by then I was in primary. <laughs> there are uh, many who are who are, yes. who are serving. By then I was in primary three, okay. and one Thursday I remember went for mass at the cathedral, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden to see I see a young boy serving, and this boy in the class he sits behind me, and the academical is not gifted. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, How? no. He can't step on the altar and I'm just here. That's mm -hmm. how it began. Okay. Yeah, I had to follow the procedures and uh, I was recruited and I started serving. That was February, but I started serving mm -hmm. in November, uh, the same year, 2023. Mm -hmm. 2003, and that's the same year I received the sacrament of confirmation. Mm -hmm. Then we continued serving and uh, later, of course, I was promoted to the level of a uh, junior catechist. Mm -hmm. And actually, my parish priests had been spotting me, telling me, you can make a very good catechist, can make a very good catechist. <laughs> remember the last one told me, can you consider looking for a, a wife, then we give a, a, an outstation. Oh, so I was like, catechist. Yes, but mm -hmm. it, I guess I loved serving God, but yeah. those dreams were still very full of like you having a family and things of the like. Yeah. Then at a certain point, I started looking into it, I said, I would rather you better move out and look for a beautiful girl than... We go and have a run an outstation. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, this friend of mine whom we are serving together is now a priest. Actually, I was ordained this uh, year in uh, July, at the beginning of uh, July. Okay. He told him he came and he was like, Vincent, you are still serving as a catechist, but mm -hmm. you can join the formation. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Because I had tried in the diocese, yeah. they have told me, no. Mm. For us, we have our fishing grounds, they were referring to minor seminaries. Oh. And to take you, still you must have finished all the six years in the, in the minor, minor seminary. seminary. Wow. Which was a different case because even I had never stepped at the gate of a minor seminary. Imagine. So mm. I had to, to ask him the details, then he told me, no. What you have to do, don't apply, get the number of the vocation director, call him. I told him, but I doubt whether he will call me. And I remember when I called the vocation director of the, the then Father Bonaventure, mm -hmm. I asked him the first question after greetings, do I qualify to apply? And mm -hmm. remember, I'm from the college, I decided some accountants, mm -hmm. but he already had gone in the field. They are still not like, you know, you are in the field, but you feel like my heart is not here. Mm. So it's from there that he, the vocation director told me, you qualify, oh. I had to apply the following Monday and he sent it and he told him, please have dropped my letter in the post office address, uh, post office, then he kind of looked into receiving it. Mm -hmm. Then after receiving it, after like two weeks, they sent medical forms. I went for checkup, everything was filled, a recommendation from the parish priest. I went for the first come and see. We were 20 of us. Mm -hmm. Then those who were selected for the second come and see, we were only four. Okay. And we started the journey, four of us up to date. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Kamara. And when I talk about the, when I, I listen to you, I am confident that uh, for us, 
You know, it, it surprises me to say that uh, for us, we have a fishing ground. Yeah. Uh, and it is good for the people to know, even if you are from Uko Timbuktu Primary School and Timbuktu Secondary School, if God is for you, he will come and snatch you for himself. And that is what uh, can vividly be shown by your story. And therefore, I have a question about uh, you are the spirit, and that means the Holy Spirit dwells here. The Holy Spirit is with us here because that's who, whom you advocate for. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit and the Catholic Church, there is a way that, uh, that especially the Protestant, they do not uh, believe that there is Holy Spirit in the Catholic Church, and it is whom you, you manifest, <laughs> you, 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 you profess. What can you tell anybody who is watching uh, as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned and the Catholic Church, because that is your life? Brother Peter. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Especially sister. your mother is a Protestant. Uh, <laughs> you may ask such right a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, the Holy Spirit yeah. is fully experienced in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can ask how. You know, we expect. Uh, extraordinary ways and means for us to see the presence, the workings, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In fact, the Holy Spirit uh, manifests himself in a very calm way, mm -hmm. in ordinary ways, but in, uh, in ordinary ways, uh, but in a very uh, common activities of life. Mm -hmm. Now in our congregation we can say that the Holy Spirit has been manifesting himself in the apostles that we do. Yeah. You see? Yeah. The Holy Spirit, who is God himself, comes and uh, restores people mm -hmm. from different chakras of life. Yeah. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Sure. To bring peace, to bring uh, harmony, to bring unity. And all these we experience them in the church through maybe education, sure. you see? Yeah. Through education, we liberate people from, uh, from poverty, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. Through uh, like uh, healthcare, all these activities, and also bringing the word of God to people, communicating peace as we are, I mean hope, yeah. as we are doing at this very moment. Sure. Hope is one of, the, uh, of, the, of, of these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Sure. So that's how the Holy Spirit manifests himself in our, in our church. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brother Peter. There is somebody watching us from uh, Consolata Catholic Parish, Likoni, Mombasa. He is Daniel Omanyo. Omanyo. Greetings to the two spirit and brothers. They have spoken so well. People are following and they are okay. saying the conversation is lit. Brother Kamara, this program is Missions of Hope. And I, s I know we know the work of the Holy Spirit, as you have explained to us. What is this work that you do as a congregation that offer hope? Which are these missions that you are involved in? In the first place, our mission uh, gets its root or its foundation in the mission of Christ. When you find read the uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, as you mentioned, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has sent me to do this and that. That manifest of Christ is what we are picking that very core of attending the, to the poor, mm -hmm. and that's where we are uh, taking everything from that very direction to the direction that is really pleasing before God. Mm -hmm. And in the process of attending to the poor, our focus, one, is for those who have scarcely had the good news or who have not yet had it. Mm -hmm. You know, poverty in this sense, we can uh, look at it as in that aspect of like, they have not known anything okay. about the God. Okay. Then second, we look again the second category of people, those who are uh, marginalized, mm -hmm. pushed to the margin by the society. Mm -hmm. And in this, in today's modern world, you can talk of uh, slave trade. We might think that the slave trade is, is of those mm -hmm. days, but today it is taking uh, new forms of human trafficking and so things of the like. Mm -hmm. So you will find that our mission is like in Rome, where we have uh, special care attention to the refugees in Tanzania, mm -hmm. uh, Kigoma, we are taking care of them because those are the poor we have. Okay. Then uh, secondly, we have again another category of people who are marginalized, like uh, uh, fostering rights of hu uh, human rights, mm -hmm. women, children, widows, 
was orphans and things of their like. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, lastly, now we come to those who are really physically poor or those who are less privileged. Mm -hmm. And in this aspect, our mission is focused like in Uganda, we take care of um, those who are less privileged, the, the, the deaf. Mm -hmm. We have a school for the deaf in Mulago. Mm -hmm. We also take uh, run the chaplaincy in Mulago Referral Hospital mm -hmm. and a vocational school for those who have dropped out of school because of one reason or the other. Mm -hmm. So that is how we are focusing on paying attention to the poor and ensuring that really they receive this good news too. Okay. Yes. Brother Peter, do you yeah. have some more to add? And if you don't mind, you can mention some of those particular apostolate here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, is the, what is that that you are doing? Okay, yeah. yeah. How the Holy Spirit manifests himself in yeah. our congregation <laughs> and uh, giving hope yes. to the community. Yes, especially in, in Kenya, Kenya, the missions you yes. are in. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, we are fostering hope to the people of Kenya in uh, different ways. Mm -hmm. And the first one, it is to fight, fight ignorance. Okay. And uh, in fact of ignorance, we have a number of schools mm -hmm. that are run by the Spirit. And one of them is that uh, we have one at Bapero, Sultan Hamoud. Bapero, yes. Bapero. Bapero is in East Pokot. East Pokot, East Pokot, okay. Pokot yeah. Okay, yeah. We have a school there. Mm -hmm. At um, Sultan Hamoud, mm -hmm. we have Holy Ghost schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, here at Mokuru. Yeah. Okay. And other schools, Holy Ghost Mkuru schools, Kwajenga Mkuru, 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 Kwajenga yeah. and Kwa Ruben. Kwa Ruben. That's the spirit and mission. Oh, also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also at mm -hmm. St. Austin, mm -hmm. we've got uh, the service of guidance and counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, we are living, we cannot call it post corona period uh, because we still hear of cases of corona, sure. which are emerging every now and then, th though they are not as rampant as yeah. they were before. Mm -hmm. And uh, living in it, people need to be guided psychologically. Mm -hmm. So at St. Austin's, uh, we have got that, uh, that uh, platform whereby they offer guidance and counseling of different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have got parishes. Yeah, in the Diocese of Nairobi, yeah. we have got them in the Diocese of Nakuru, St. Francis mm -hmm. of Assis Kitty, mm -hmm. and uh, we have got them in the Diocese of Garissa, Hora, mm -hmm. you know, even in, uh, uh, even, uh, in um, those parishes that we run, mm -hmm. whatever we communicate in our visualization is the word of God. Okay. And in every apostolate you do to bring hope, you know, if it is not based on the word of God, actually, the real hope <laughs> is not there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. the hope we communicate through our apostolate is a participation to the hope excellence, yeah. which is the word oh of God. God. Okay. And so that's how here in Kenya we deal with them. Okay. Thank you very much, brothers. Uh, you are enlightening us on the missions that you are doing and carrying out, especially to the less fortunate members of the society. And when I listen to some of the areas that you are mentioning, especially in Kenya, there are those marginalized places. We shall continue to understand how do they go about it. Do not go away. We are coming back shortly for our last segment of Missions of Hope with I, Sister Esther Moturi. And in the studio, we have the spirit and brother, Brother Peter and Brother Kamara. Keep watching. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
get Lord's Prayer as your Skiza tune, send Skiza followed by code 7381264 and send it to Conversation of today's program, Missions of Hope, dear viewer, and we are continuing to understand the spirit and the work they do and the places they are they are located in Kenya and out of Kenya. And before we went for the short break, Brother Peter was elaborating on some of the missions they are doing in our country, Kenya. And Brother Peter, as I asked. Uh, before we went for the break, I was wondering, how do you do it? Because you are doing the mission on those marginalized places like the Balpeo is in East Pokot East or Pokot, West yeah. Pokot? East Pokot. Yes. And uh, I can, I understand the terrain and the way that place is for the really mm. poor people. When you come to Nairobi, you are not in uh, in Karen or Runda, you are in Mukuru Kwa Jenga and Mukuru Kwa Ruben. How do you go about that? And what pushes the, the spirit and to be able to carry out this apostolate in such areas? Uh, thank you, sister. You know, we always, and we are always reminded yeah. uh, to follow the, the impetus of our founders. Yeah. And as we started with, our founders saw the need yeah. in the poor people. Yeah. And as he found the need in the poor people, he was pushed mm. to sacrifice himself for the sake of these poor people. And uh, he never relied much on himself. Yeah. In fact, he relied on the divine providence yeah and so when you do when we do our work very well in mukuru in fact even we, we have a parish here at uh, at at uh, Rangata, at karen st yeah. john's yeah we are running it yeah. not to say that we have no poor in mm -hmm. st john's yeah. we don't have uh, we cannot say that we do not have poor in westwards mm -hmm. because central uh, st austin is situated in westwards right yeah. yeah yeah we can have there the cream of kenya yeah but According to the understanding of our founder, as far as poor are concerned, mm -hmm. there are those people who yet they are living in mansions, they are living in bungalows, but they have that vacuum to be filled. Maybe it is on their psychological side. Okay. It, it could be they need just company, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. They need someone to reason to. Yeah. Those who are doing those people are poor in one way or another. another. Sure. And also uh, as, the, uh, as another element of poverty, it's not only destitute, mm -hmm. as I, has, I have said, mm -hmm. but also these people, they also need the message of hope. Yeah. And as I said, the paramount message of hope is enshrined in the word of the word of God. Okay. And other areas that we have our missions, that are the peripheries, mm -hmm. we are working in Malindi, okay. in Malindi Diocese. Yeah. And as a, as a great example uh, and a witness of this kind of uh, work we do to those people who are working in uh, the peripheries, where the church finds it difficult to find workers to sit there, mm -hmm. uh, the bishop of uh, Rodua Diocese is a spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, it's another periphery, periphery right? Yeah. Whereby, with all these kind of activities we do in Rodwa, in uh, East Pokot, in Marindi, in Mukuru, mm. we, we depend on the 
and the divine providence. Okay. And when we do it very well, yeah. the way wishes come in, they support our missions, then we try to get uh, some here and there from the schools that we run, yeah. you see. With all these activities, we are able to bring the goodness and to communicate the message of Christ. Thank you so much. So they are doing their work very well. Well wishers, you can still support. I am sure they, they will need, especially those people in those areas, the periphery of our country where they have mentioned. Brother Kamara, do you have more to add on that? Yes, as he has said, yeah. you will find that today in the modern society, because one may ask if you are uh, oriented to go to where the church cannot find the missionaries, yeah. where it is difficult to work, why are you then staging in St. Austin, mm -hmm. a city, uh, yeah. a parish, really, you can't find uh, simple people go attending mass there. Yeah. The point behind is, today poverty has taken a different direction, especially in cities. The because you has changed. Uh -huh. yeah. So you will find that much as they are there, materially rich, but spiritually, you find that there is a problem somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's why I will say it on air, because that's what you have been experiencing out there. Yeah. You will find that children of the rich, they don't know our Catholic prayers, even the bisques. Why? Because they find that they don't have time for them. Mm -hmm. Father wakes up in the morning, comes in the late evening, the dad and the mother the same. Yeah. And all at the end of the day, you find that they are just like a sheep without shepherd. Mm -hmm. So that's why we come in, much as they are not materially poor, but still that spiritual aspect of it, we also look into it and uh, make sure that they are also spiritually rich. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. And as you have, have explained, Poverty is taking a different uh, trajectory. And our founder, my founder, St. Francis, the sp I mean, not the founder, the, the spirituality whom we follow, Franciscan, he said, read the signs of time. And I think it is high time that, uh, and you are doing it already, that congregation keep looking at the, uh, the signs of time because apparently you find that most children who are from the rich families are even going through uh, drugs-oriented problems, and you find it is becoming a big problem. I think uh, the, the, the apostolates keep expanding as days go by. Brother Kamara, there is somebody who is asking, what is that pendant or the, the crucifix of the spirit, and what does it mean? If you can maybe elaborate a bit about it. Yeah, here is a spiritual cross. But I don't know that I'm able to zoom it. Let yeah. me hold this one, which is visible. Yeah. If you look into this spirit and cross of ours, or spirit, uh, spirit and logo, you will realize that there is uh, inside that white is uh, uh, an image of a dove descending, mm -hmm. and it is in the background of red, which is also framed in a way that it is, uh, appears like a frame of fire. This is not a coincidence that is because our congregation began on the day of Pentecost. No, we as spiritans, we know the role of the Holy Spirit in the mission. Okay. The Holy Spirit is always the protagonist of mission. Therefore, we know that whatever we are doing mm -hmm. is not by our own efforts. Mm -hmm. It's not by our own efforts. The Holy Spirit is always there for us and yeah. he goes ahead of us. And you can see it vividly in the experience of Peter in uh, Paul in Athens. Mm -hmm. When he goes there, he finds these people, they have so many altars they are offering this to this god this to this god mm -hmm. and they have one altar inscribed the unknown god oh. and peter says yeah. now this paul says this unknown god mm -hmm. is the one i have come to preach to you mm -hmm. so uh, the holy spirit is always there ahead of us only what we go to do is to unveil to their eyes that this is the holy spirit uh, the holy spirit is here he works in this way, let us come and adore him. So that's the logo of ours, of course, also based on the fact that the congregation began on Pentecost, okay. and uh, which some theologians would refer to as the birthday of the Catholic of Church. The Catholic yes. Church, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that elaboration. Brother Peter, there, must, there may be a young man watching us today, and uh, he is from a Protestant family. Mm -hmm. What can you advise him? as far as joining priesthood or religious life is concerned. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, people might think that uh, this vocation is outdated, yeah. especially from an African setting, mm. because you know, Africans, 
uh, known of they have to marry, yeah, right? Yeah. Not only uh, one from the African point of view, you More see, they are, known of, they are known of polygamy. Yeah. And so they ask a question, uh, it, 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 you know, to some of them it might be logic eh, mm -hmm. to see someone coming for the, uh, going for this kind of way of life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to tell them that we always listen to the word of God, to, to, to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And not only what is read, but that what is he whispers into us through our conscience. Mm -hmm. the, Holy, the Holy Spirit, God himself, whispers to us in different, in different ways. Yeah. And uh, this, kind of this way of life, it starts through attraction, right? You might feel attracted, mm -hmm. like some of them, maybe they go through Catholic schools, yeah. others they watch maybe the Catholic uh, Holy Mass, yeah. maybe on the Capuchin TV. Mm -hmm. Even during Corona, it was being broadcast in the mm -hmm. in the national in the national televisions, television. right? Yeah. So, if you feel attracted, that is the first step towards going into this kind of life. Mm -hmm. Then pray over it. Then be open. Be open to your parents. Be open to the Holy Spirit because those are the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But the very best thing is to reason to it. Okay. Reason always to the spirit who speaks at the bottom of our hearts. If you reason, you shall never make any mistake in life. Thank you. Yeah. Now, somebody has watched, has listened, is attracted mm -hmm. to join the Spirit and or the Holy Ghost or the congregation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your congregation. What is that that is one is expected to have as far as maybe the qualifications are concerned? Yeah, as far as uh, Kenya is concerned, Kenya, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, in Kenya, the qualification is the minim minimum entry to university. Okay. Currently, is at Cyprus. Yes. So having a Cyprus, you can join. Then you be a Catholic, yeah. You be a Catholic. You are baptized. You are confirmed. Mm -hmm. But even if you have this vocation and you are not a Catholic, you can come and uh, you can go through the instructions mm -hmm. uh, as uh, you are going through this. Some people are confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, last holiday mm -hmm. uh, at uh, my uh, at my home parish, uh, the, there is a seminarian who was confirmed. Right. Mm -hmm. So, guys, uh, people are confirmed after they have uh, joined this this life. Yeah. So it's not a must uh, you be confirmed. Just mm. come, uh, provided you have this calling. Yeah. Then uh, you, after that, we have got posturancy mm -hmm. program, which lasts for about eight months to nine months, mm -hmm. approximately one year, you can say. Yeah. Then for posturancy, you go for philosophy, three years. Mm -hmm. After philosophy, you'll be taken to novitiate for one year. This is the time that uh, you are read into the spirit of the congregation. Yeah. Everything, as far as the congregation is concerned, is demystified. Mm. It's well explained to you, yeah. and you understand the congregation. From now, uh, the novitiate, you go for pastoral experience here. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in that pastoral experience here, according to our rec recent chapter, 21st chapter mm. of our congregation, which took place in Tanzania, Bagamoyo, mm -hmm. you have to go for two years. You know, in the period of the two years of pastoral program, mm -hmm. is to learn another language. Oh. Because you know, our congregation, uh, the it's language of the congregation is French. Okay. That's the language of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Then we are working in the, in the Portuguese countries. So you have, uh, if, if you have a chance of going to Angola, you learn Portuguese and earn in English that, uh, which, we, which we use in Kenya. Okay. So you are taken for pastoral experience in a country where you are going to learn at least the sacred language of the congregation. Okay. Then uh, from pastoral experience, you go for the scholastic studies, that is theology, mm -hmm. for four years here in Tangaza. Mm -hmm. Or if you go somewhere else in the, in the world, you can go to Trinidad, you see? Where you can and go for, for three, <laughs> to, yeah, Trinidad, <laughs> yeah. in France, mm -hmm. in Portugal, in Ireland, provided uh, we are found there. Okay. So that's the process and how to go about it. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, I see that time is <laughs> it's not on our side. We would have said a lot, a lot, but uh, I am sure that uh, the viewer is getting, has now known who you are and where you are situated. And maybe before we wind up, Brother Kamara, what about if somebody is not in Kenya? How 
What are the qualifications? From Uganda, the first uh, uh, qualification is the will and interest. Yeah. Because even if you have the qualification, if you are not willing and interested, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it is the Form 6, and you must have scored uh, uh, 10 points and two principal passes. Uh, then if you are from a university, that is another advantage. Okay. If let's say those points you can't raise, the, you didn't go to get them, you are free to first do a diploma or a degree. Still, if you apply, mm -hmm. they can look into it and consider taking you. Okay. Then the rest follows as he has explained. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Brother Peter, if you don't mind, you can shout out. Maybe yeah. if you have social uh, yeah. platform where somebody can get you, or if you have a number that you can shout out for anybody who would wish uh, to reach out to the spirit and Okay. It's your time now to do mm. it, mm. and after that, you do your closing remark. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. In Kenya, they can find us through website spiritan.org. Again. Spiritan.org. Okay. That's how they can uh, come into, in touch with us in Kenya. Mm -hmm. If they want to know more about our congregation, they can go to the congregation website. Mm -hmm. Spiritan Roma dot org okay spiritan roma dot org those who would like to write to us they can write to 187 fika p.o box 187 fika thank you yeah uh, your closing remark <laughs> yes my closing remark is that uh, it's always good to reason to the spirit as a family man as a religious as a priest as a young man who is looking for, uh, who is looking for uh, well-being of life, mm -hmm. listening to the Holy Spirit is very important. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, as we listen to the Holy Spirit, we are able to avoid all the noises which bo bombard us yeah. in the in the in the world. Mm -hmm. So, as far as we are surrounded by a lot of noises in the world, listening to the Holy Spirit, we are able to channel to the right of life. So thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you so much Brother Peter, Brother Kamara, your closing remark. Uh, first and foremost, I am <coughs> profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled for this privilege you have granted us to share about our congregation and inspire someone out there who is really uh, interested and feels like he can join us. What I can tell them is a quotation from uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, that, Behold, I'm doing things in you. God is doing things in you, and in that very process of doing things in you, he wants to use you as an instrument. So if you are out there, you feel this calling of becoming a religious, you feel this calling of becoming a priest, please don't hesitate. Hurry up. The doors are open and you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Brother Peter, Brother Kamara, for coming to be with us and talk about the Spirit and Congregation. We are a privilege to have you and we are happy that you took your time to prepare and come and talk about what you do as your missions that offer hope to the society. Dear viewer, look at uh, listen to the Spirit of God to guide you because God is doing a new thing. This has been the Missions of Hope with thy sister Esther Muturi and in the studio I was with brother Peter Mwangi and brother Kamara Vincent. Until next Tuesday is bye for now. God bless you. Congregation of the Holy Ghost Fathers, a celebration of faith and service.
In the spirit of unwavering dedication to the divine and a wholehearted commitment to serving both God and humanity, we bear witness to the profound spiritual strength that arises from this sacred calling. Through our steadfast pursuit of God's work in His chosen way, we never find ourselves lacking in His boundless supply of grace. But who are the Spiritans and what is the founding history and guiding charism of the Congregation of Holy Ghost Fathers? Our congregation is officially called the Congregation of the Holy Spirit under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We were founded in 1703 by Father Claude Poulard de Plas in France. And in 1848, our congregation majored with the Society of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which was founded by Father Francis Mary Paul Lieberman, also in France. We serve in over 60 countries across the world. And here in Kenya, we have a common house of theology where students from all over the world come to study theology at Tangaza College University. Our charism of the founders is to serve people who are in their need, especially in places where the church finds it hard to get workers. The spiritual uh, formation journey takes 10, uh, at least 10 years, probably 10 to 12 years, depending on an individual, the kind of formation that person has gone through. And these years are divided into, we begin with the postulancy level, that is normally one year, and then we, uh, we have the philosophicum, whereby the students study philosophy, that normally takes three years. We also have uh, novitiate, that normally takes one year, and then after that we have pastoral, that normally takes one or two years, depending on where somebody has been sent to. And then after that, we join a theologicum, whereby uh, we study theology for four years before somebody is ordained. The Congregation of the Holy Ghost Fathers invites you all to the diaconate ordination of their 16 brothers. And I am one of the 16 brothers, the Spirit and brothers, who will be ordained on the 16th of September at St. John the Evangelist Parish, Nairobi. And I take the pleasure to invite all of you to this occasion to grace the event, the ordination of all the 16 brothers. We have different nationalities. We have eight from Kenya, we have four from Uganda, one from Tanzania, two from Zambia, and one from Angola. The Holy Mass will be presided over by His Lordship Right Reverend John Binder, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Lodua. This event will be broadcasted live on Capuchin TV and across all social media platforms. This way, you can share in the spiritual enrichment from wherever you are. So I invite young men who are still discerning their vocation to think of us, the Spiritans, and become part of our large family. Asante Nisana. Capuchin TV extends its warmest congratulations to the 16 brothers and the entire congregation of the Holy Ghost Fathers for this remarkable achievement. To stay connected with the latest updates and inspirational content, we invite you to continue watching Capuchin TV. Your support and viewership empower us to spread the message of faith and love to the world. Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity channel. <laughs>